know it is rare for you to sit down and have conversations. So we we appreciate you doing this. Thank you for being with us, man. Man, you're welcome. I ain't seen CC since he popped me up in the All Star game. See, I told you he's gonna remember. Wow. <laughs> No. That's a, and that's the Barry. That's the only time you guys faced each other, that's right? The only time we faced each other. I, I don't think we ever seen each other since then either. Really, no. Golf tournament, but I don't even remember. No, nah, we haven't really seen each other much since then. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, when you were the hitting coach with the Marlins, I pitched a game in spring training, and we saw each yeah. other. Yeah, um, was- but other than that, no, not really. And I just remember mm-hmm. being on the mound. Obviously, I grew up in the Bay Area. I grew up a big Barry Bonds fan, and I remember being on the mound, just thinking. There's nowhere I can throw this ball where he's not going to smash it. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> when he's in the box, there was nowhere that there was no nowhere visually that you could see where you could get a ball by him. It was insane like just to see him in the box and yeah, that was the only time we faced each other. Yeah, it was nice. It was a good matchup. I like it. <laughs> it's so funny. Were you nervous at all, see? I know it's the All-Star game, but you're facing one of your idols. Oh yeah. I, you know what? I was I was really nervous that I just didn't want to hit him because you know the first time I faced Griffey <laughs> I drilled them. So I was like, this is the All-Star game. I don't want Barry pissed off. So, like, let me just keep everything out out of the way in the other batter's box. <laughs> but, I mean, to that point, Barry, was there, it, was there a pitch or any zone where you felt vulnerable? When I was younger, not as I got older and more mature, I think, you, you know, you develop as you get older. You mature as time goes on. Um, when I was younger, I had a bunch of holes. They were all over the place. Here, 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 here. You know? <laughs> you know, but as I closed the gap and closed the gap, um, my thing was just facing great pitchers. It didn't matter. Like CC was a great pitcher. So the challenge for me was just going against the best at, at, at each individual time of level of each end of person's career, as well as they want to go against me at the same time. Were you like a big video watcher of all these guys that, that, you faced before, you know, before facing them, or were you just going up there with your mechanics, your mechanics, and if you throw it in the zone, I'm, I got a pretty good idea how to barrel it. No, I watch videos. Yeah, I watch some videos of certain pitchers. Like mostly were lefties, so you'd be one of them for sure because mostly the lefty lefty matchup would be the most difficult one. Um, I would, I would technically watch briefly. I could probably pick them apart within the first five minutes. Um, and know exactly where his weaknesses and strengths are. And then I would go off of that. But, you know, you could get into the game situation and his weakness end up being a strength. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> you know, backfires on you at times. So um, I calculated a lot of scenarios and situations, but, you know, I calculated them with, you know, as who I was. I didn't calculate them against a whole uh, batch of hitters. Like, you know, Every time he faces a lefty, he does this. Well, that's not lefty. I'm a different lefty, so things change, right? So mm, I got to go. Yeah. Against, I would go against myself with what would CC do against Junior? What would CC do against, you know, top lefties um, compared to just other left handers? So how, how does he pitch against them? And I would probably fall into that group. And that was me. Like, I never saw anybody that was like me. There was, you know, there was nobody that was. Six six, three hundred pounds. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I had I, I couldn't watch anybody. Like I didn't watch video because there was nobody doing what I what I was doing. So I just kind of you know did my own thing. I would try to memorize swings off you know just like watching guys, but there was nobody for me to watch. So I had to like make up my own game plan pretty much every time. Right, right. I, I see that. But every pitcher is different too, you know. Every pitcher throws differently. The angles are different. From where they come from is different. Um, so you know, you have to treat everyone individually, you know, based on how they are. Yeah. Barry, did you have a very specific, consistent routine every single day you got to the ballpark as you prepare to play? Yeah, I went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you nap at the park if every day? Any, any player to play with me, any team, I'll tell you. What did Barry come to the ballpark? He went to the gym. He went to sleep. <laughs> uh, if you went on my routine, I was sleep most of the time in the clubhouse. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. What time are you waking up then before the game starts? Uh, Probably like. 30 minutes before the game or something, I would go hit. I would oh go God. to the gym. I'd work out and eat, and then I'd go to sleep. I always <laughs> wow. felt that 
I needed as much energy as I could have for those three hours. And a lot of guys like to play cards. I had nothing wrong with that. A lot of guys like to have the music blaring until they blow their heads out. Um, there, you know, people like to do what they like to do. Me, I wanted as much energy as I could put in those three hours and relaxing my brain and my mind and just getting away from all that chaos was the best thing for me because then I can give you everything I had on the field for the three hours. Do, do you and I learned that from Mike Schmidt. I was, gonna, <laughs> I, I was gonna say, do you think growing up in the clubhouse helped you like, you know, understand your routine and understand like, I don't need the loud music. I don't need all these different things. Like I just need rest. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the allure of the big league clubhouse was never like a thing for you because you grew up in a big league clubhouse. So it's not something that you're looking to go there and have a party every single day. No, you know, and I grew up with all the older ball players with Willie and my dad and Smitty and, you know, Griffey senior and Ozzy Smith and all, you know, I can go on and on for all the great Lona Ryan. You know, I can just keep going. The list just goes on forever. Parker was playing at the time, you know, everyone. And, you know, they all helped educate us at that time. It's different now. They they basically don't even want us around. But <laughs> but back then it was like, you know, they, you know, you grew up in this this group where it was, you know, it was our club. And the veteran players were, you know, the grandfathers of the club. And you, you know, you listened to them and you and you took notes from them and you, you know, you learned from them and each individual would educate you on certain things that, you know, you might need to know about the game or you also need to know how to prepare yourself for the game. And um, in my generation, you know, you got that from everyone, McCovey, I, you know, I go on Marichelle, things like that. And, you know, we went, you know, we went to them for that school of lessons. And, um, so Mike Schmidt one day sat there and said, you know, that's when all the energy was coming in where you just close your eyes for like 40 minutes or 30 minutes and you just chill. I just took it to the stream and fell asleep. <laughs> 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 but I could always, I always was clear headed. It was always that I could see things better. I could, I had more energy at that time. So sleeping for me was my everyday ritual. Who's waking you up then, Barry? Are you setting an alarm? Like, how are you getting up then on those days to be ready to go before the game? Are you just getting yourself up? I just got up. I don't know. My body clock just said it was game time. I don't know. I, I mean, I probably had alarm sometimes, you know, for sure. <laughs> you know, probably at the beginning stages. But, you know, my, my clock was just to clear my head and just get away from BP, everything that's going on, just clear my head so I can give the three hours – undivided attention so did you not take bp then on the field i took bp all the time i don't, I don't even understand oh. how these guys don't take bp on the field yeah. i only yeah. took didn't take bp if i was tired but i okay me i want to be on that field i don't care how many swings you take take five take ten take two but to position myself in that batter's box daily was just important to make sure that my swing path and what I had to do at that moment was going to be on point, not just take it for granted. I'm just going to walk out there, put my foot in the batter's box and not feel unbalanced or tweaked out. So I just wanted to feel it. And then, then I could go in the batting cage and, and do whatever drills I want to do from there. Hmm. You obviously could do as much damage or more damage than anybody in baseball history in any count. But I want to ask you about this because something – C, I was just talking about with CC. One of the things that bothers me sometimes when I see offensive approaches today is because there's such a focus on the impact of the home run, because <laughs> people are so aware of the macroeconomics and the analytics, and knowing the home run obviously has an outsized impact on winning and losing. But because of that, I feel like in a lot of cases, we've lost the different swings in different counts, right? Different situations. Mm -hmm. And there's not an A swing, a B swing, a C swing. There's not a two strike swing necessarily. It's just, no, you're going to take that swing all the time and, you know, and get the results you get and, and it'll be better in the long term. But micro situations call for something different. I'm wondering for you, how did you approach that, Barry? As a guy who hit more home runs than anybody in baseball history, did you have different swings for different counts? Man on third, less than two outs. Like, how how did you approach that and how you would swing? Of course, first of all, it's kind of like you're asking me two questions. Today's generation okay. and in my generation, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. you're, the players only adapt to what MLB puts out there, right? It, okay, so you, 
today's generation of players and analytics and the swing paths and everyone's talking about all that stuff. I've already proved it. I go down to the ballpark because I work with the team all the time and I already proved that their methods don't work. It's not <laughs> logical. Um, so we work together. I work with the guys and I work with the coaches and stuff and show them that it doesn't matter how you start, but the technique's still the same. We got to get the point A to point B and we have to connect the dots regardless of where you start. But the, actually the swing ends up the same. So if you want to go with different eras of different generations, we take my generation and I'm going to move it to their generation first. The reason why you guys get the home runs, you get the flip of the bats, you get to do everything is because the hitters just take batting practice from afternoon throughout the game. Mm -hmm. My generation, you take batting practice and you might get hit during the game and you better be a little bit more defensive and a little bit more prepared to swing the bat, duck, move, or whatever you have to. These guys don't have to do that anymore. They can walk mm -hmm. up to their – so to me, is it – is it – do the players do it because MLB allows them? Sure. But then the swing can get a little lackadaisical is what I call it, is that you're so comfortable – that you can you you break down things easily instead of being more precise. Like me, I had to be more technical because I had a home run and put my bat in the stands. I know what's going to happen at next at bat. That ball's going to mm -hmm. come up here. I could come behind me, and then I got to make a decision. I got to stand in there and fight this fight and stay technically sound and throw my hands right and get a hit and get out of this problem. Or, but today they don't have to do that. So I think that. They, they don't have a sense of urgency of technique. Mm. So the technique of hitting to me is broken down because I don't have to worry about the other tangibles that could happen. Mm. So I could just go up there and swing. And so, you know, I made an analogy like, you know, I guess golfing, you know, CC, I see him on his Instagram all the time. Golfing. <laughs> <laughs> so, all you know, I do. You, 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 take a, you take a a hundred yard shot and now you're being technically sound because you've got a pitching wedge or a nine iron or whatever it is. And now you want to be technically sound. Now you, you put it on the green, you feel happy, you put it out. Now you go the now you go to the next tee box and you grab your driver and then you swing as hard as you can. The ball fades this way or goes that way or whatever, because you are, don't have to be technically sound. The hitters today just don't have to be technically technically sound because there's no reason for them to, you know, if you hit a home run, you can do what the heck you want to do. doesn't really matter. Yeah. You know, I hit a home run and throw my bat in the stands and wave at everybody around. I know exactly where that next ball is going to come. Hmm. Right. It's okay. You hit a home run, but it's and in my generation, the veterans could do it. So they said, well, you did it. You spun around with the daughters. I had 15 years in major league. So it's a whole different person. Yeah. Mm. You got guys that just get in here, rookie players, and they're spinning around and doing the moonwalk like Michael Jackson already, <laughs> and, which is fine for me. I enjoy to watch it. Don't get yeah. me wrong. I'm not jealous of it. I think it's really cool, but there's no sense of urgency. And so I believe that the technique has just been broken down because of the two, the sense of urgencies that they don't have. So, and, so the, sorry, go ahead, say. No, I was about to say, and the philosophy of, of pitching has changed too, because in your generation, guys were not only throwing in at you, but throwing in for strikes and throwing, mm -hmm. you know, two seamers off your hip, where now you got the best pitchers in the game never come inside. Like Jacob DeGrom throws 102 miles an hour on one side of the plate. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like Garrett Cole does the same thing. Shohei Otani, to a certain extent, does the same exact thing <laughs> where these are the three of the best pitchers in the league and guys are just don't have to worry about anything at all coming inside for a strike or at them at all. So, like you said, they can just stay in their, in their posture and, if and if get their swing off. If I hit someone and I get fined and I get suspended, why am I going to do it? I mean, mm. this is a business. It's my life. You know, mm. I'm not... There's no, there's no retaliation of any kind. It's over. So I'm going to take a fine and and have to sit, which could hurt my team because now I could miss a start, which in theory hurts your team. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I going to subject myself to that if my teammate or the other team can't 
protect each other. If we can't protect each other, and that's the difference. We policed ourselves. Now they don't, they can't. As soon as one ball goes up and in, it's an immediately warning, boom, stop yeah. everyone out, this whole other thing. And, and so, you know, it's different. And, and do I really care? No, I don't really care about it personally. <laughs> I, mean, I don't really care. I just wish I was playing at this time because I'd be doing some, I'd have some fun. <laughs> I'm fun, you know because i go back a lot of emotions back then so i didn't get here yeah. i'd be having a good ass time right now <laughs> oh can you imagine that the barry bonds oh. bat flips in 2023 oh, uh, let me tell you let me tell you what would go out of my box right now <laughs> <laughs> They'd have to but. rename that drop. They'd have to rename that drop. <laughs> uh, but so just so I understand this fully, so what you're saying, Barry, is when you are when you have to be worried about the inside corner, when you have to be worried about getting hit, it makes you be more technically sound with your swing. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you have, you, you, you have to stay in a pocket. And okay. you've got to stay there. You, you, it's either you're going to be afraid or you're not going to be afraid. Mm-hmm. And to me, you can hit me one time with a baseball. That's nothing. That's one. What we do, you know, it's different nowadays. They just, I mean, how many guys have been even hit during the year in the last couple of years or at any time lately? I mean, right, it's okay. Right. I'm glad people stay healthy. Don't, you know, you don't want to see anyone yeah. get hurt 100% for that, though. But, you know, we, we got to touch it, feel it, smell it. And sometimes we got to fight against our brothers. It's just the mm. way it goes. Sometimes we just got to not like each other. I mean, mm. you got guys on the team, they high five each other from each other's dugouts. I mean, <laughs> we need to talk to them. I mean, Ken Griffin Jr. and I are like brothers, but we, I would spit him out and chew him up on the baseball field. Yeah. Hope he got stitches and everything else. Then we'll go to the hospital together. We'll stitch each other up and say, let's do this tomorrow, man. And, you know, but. It's different now that everyone likes each other. Everyone, you know, you know, but like I said, I should I rewrite all kind of stuff about <laughs> can, can can I bring up my favorite Barry Bond stat of all time? Because yeah, this ahead. is one this is one, see, I feel like me and you at some point we did the baseball reference, like just looking mm-hmm. into with one of our guests. I don't remember who, but like how amazing Barry's years are. But the 120 intentional walks in 2004 mm-hmm. is my favorite stat because nobody even walks 100 times, regular walks. Yeah. No, like If you look at walk leaders in today's game, and this is at a time where walks are emphasized more than ever before, right? But you, you don't have guys even walk 100 times anymore. In 2004, you were intentionally walked 120 times. Mm-hmm. It's it's I, you know obviously the home run stats, the RBIs, the OPS, everything else. That's that always blows my mind that that you had more intentional walks than anybody else had regular walks. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. You must have gotten bored that year, Barry, with all the intentional. No, walks. because my thing, the game is for me. I was a five tool plus one player, so. I like to run. I like to steal bases. I like to score. Um, it kept me busy. Um, so, and sometimes the walks helped me rest for that bat. You did me a favor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so in theory, you you gave me a break. Um, you know, I didn't want to steal bases, but I did. But I, that's what I enjoyed to do. So the aspect of the game is, is baseball. I won. I was a complete player. So walk me my job to get to second base help my teammate out make his job easier so i still second base try to give him just a base hit to score and are still third or whatever it was um and that's the type of player i was you know i wasn't the best clubhouse guy that's for damn sure but on the baseball field i took my walks i took my hits i did everything i could for my teammate to have an opportunity to do his job that it's interesting hearing you say that barry just you weren't the best clubhouse guy why weren't you because it's a business and people don't understand that I took it as a business. And in most of, in most games, everyone felt I it was, I was being a dick, but I really wasn't. I mean, yeah. at all. I I love you. I respect you. I would help you in any way aspect. But I'm not going to tell you what I do because we we don't know how long we're teammates. Yeah. And then the teammate factor is that you're going to another team or it could be traded, and then you're going to tell someone what I told you. 
And then that guy's going to do And it only happened to me once. I can't even remember who I was talking to that he got traded and left her in the team. And he goes, oh, boom. And I, that pitcher threw that exact pitch I told him. And I was like, huh. So you're going to be teammates for me. And then you're going to be teammates for them. For them. <laughs> Ain't no way in hell I'm ever telling anybody what I do. Or I'm not going to tell you what I see. I'm not going to tell you what. I'll give you general conversation, yeah. help you. But I don't know how long we're going to be teammates, brother. And then this is a business. And so I have to protect my my business. No, that so makes I, sense. I, wasn't, just... I wasn't an asshole. I wasn't trying to be a dick. It was just, hey, Barry, what do you see? I said, I see a picture. <laughs> what does he do? I say, those balls and strikes. <laughs> why you got? Why you gotta be a dick? Bro, is, I mean, why are you taking it personal, man? I'm not like. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> That's oh, tremendous. Man. That is tremendous. Well, Barry. Also, I've heard you talk about too. Like, it, you're very introverted as well, right? Yeah, very much so. I'm a loner. Very much it, so. So then, how did that play into as well? Kind of how you felt in the clubhouse, or you know, wanting to—I don't know—wanting to go and nap, or not wanting to get into those conversations. It's just hard to explain to people. My I, all I loved was sports. Everything I ever loved was working out, and training, just like I do now. It's all I do, and I can't explain to people why I am like I am. But I'm okay by myself. Yeah. I I. I just want to train hard, work hard, be good with the team on the field, and then just go home. I didn't care about being a superstar. I didn't care about, you know, being in front of a camera. I didn't care about any of that stuff. I just wanted to just kill you on the field and train the next day and do it again, and that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. I didn't care about winning or losing. That didn't really bother me because I thought I was a winner because I was out there trying. You can't win everything. My dad was always like, you know, you're a winner by being there. Just don't be a quitter. Just don't quit. Mm. You know, finish the race. Doesn't matter what place you come in. As you finish, you win. And so I never won the World Series. But I never felt like I was a loser. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, I, I've just always been to myself kind of person. I don't, I can't explain it to people. I don't, I don't really try to avoid anything. I just don't like a lot of chaos. Mm. I just, you know, that's why I played baseball. People said, why? I mean, Truthfully, because I didn't have to talk. <laughs> if you really want to understand the truth, I didn't have to say anything. And I got some dude doing this at third base, and I don't even know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Most of those signs didn't apply to you, Barry. <laughs> I didn't get it anyway. I wasn't like a straight A student, so no. I wasn't going to pass the class anyway. <laughs> um, I just had an IQ in that game of baseball, and it was very high. Mm. And I, I knew it at a very not super young age, but I knew it, that I had a, mm. that I could see things differently on the baseball. So it wasn't, I don't know why I try to tell people, I mean, I go to the ballpark today and, you know, I talk with the players and jock and a lot of the guys and they're like, Barry, no one talks like this. Why, where do you get it from? I don't mm. know, but I can mm. see your mistake before you do it. I can see what you're doing wrong. And I don't know why I can fix it. I have no idea. I just, I seen it goes, wow. And I, I don't talk about your hands or what you're doing. It, it's, it's communication. I think you, you have to understand that person, right? I mean, as a pitcher, CC will know this. Sometimes you get players, they're professional athletes. And I try to explain to people, you're dealing with a professional athlete that worked his whole entire life before he even met me. And he's in a small number of athletes. He's already great because he got it. Now the communication changes you know you get some coaches say you need to do this you need this players already know that answer it's like okay i'm one for 15. okay i got that i mean i'll tell you a story i told it before with ozuna ozuna was like i'll make it brief he was like one for 17 i believe or something he took a two old slider and he hit a hard ground ball to shortstop and i was sitting in the dugout and i just like this and he called me poppy goes what poppy and i said what i didn't say anything i was just sitting here and he goes, I will, I'm not like you. And I said, that's the first thing you got, right? <laughs> 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 that's uh, and I, you know, I, I said that I was going to say something. I said, you just tell me a story. He goes, it was a hanging slider. I said, okay. So you get a two-row pitch. It's a hanging slider. You know it's a hanging slider, which I see on the film. is two feet outside. Who doesn't hit a hanging slider out of the ballpark if you know it's a hanging slider? 
So he goes, what do you want me to do? Because now he's one for 18. So I tell him, I said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to make an out. And he goes, you want to make an out? I said, they can fire me. I don't care. Just all I yeah. want you to do, there's a third baseman, shortstop, second baseman, first. I want you to hit a line drive to any one of those. Matter of fact, I, I even have like, I didn't have no money. I'm in the bug dug up. I said, I got $1,000 in my pocket. I'll give you $1,000. You can just hit any one of those guys, you're a professional athlete, and make it out. There's got to be a line drive. Can't be no ground ball. You got like, you can do that, right? He goes, yeah, I can do that. His next at bat, he hit a bullet out of damn near out the stadium. <laughs> I mean, literally, right? I mean, I, I was like, holy dude. Comes back in the dugout. I'm still sitting there. He goes, what? You see that, puppy? I said, I saw it. I just kept staring like this. He goes, what? I told you to make it out, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> but because, because the... I redirected his brain a little bit because he's already a professional athlete. Sometimes you just have to redirect it. He did it. He was already mechanically perfect. And I said, you see what I'm saying? You just, it's like different conversations. For the, but if that player respects you, it's different. And a lot of times problems I have is because I'm so up in this level, they think anything I say is like God said something, which doesn't work that way. Cause I always got to explain to them. It took 22 years for me to get to where I got to. So we got mm. 22 years if you want to do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not going to work today, and it may not work tomorrow, but if we keep working at this for a few years, it's going to get it, and each person will develop. And, you know, so my brain is my – I'm. that's why I guess I only think baseball, I only think sports or training or working out, resting and recovering and doing it again. And I'm okay alone. It's, it's not, it's not, I don't know why it bothers everybody else. Really <laughs> you know what's crazy, yeah. right? Or these, these are the conversations that I would have with, with Eddie Murray when he was the hitting coach when I was, when I was young in Cleveland. And we would talk, we would just sit on the bench and talk about what I would thought was hitting, but we would be talking about pitching. And he would be mm -hmm. teaching, he was teaching me how to pitch when we were sitting on the bench and he was, he would, he would be asking me, what am I looking for if I was hitting? Like, mm -hmm. what would you be looking for right now? What would you be? And he was telling me what I should be throwing to these guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, after I'm, I'm yeah. sitting there, I'm, I'm like, oh, he's teaching me how to pitch. You know what I'm saying? But, like, mm. having these conversations and having, and having these guys around is something that the game is really, really lacking and missing. And that's why yeah. you see the amount of uh, – the, the lack of the offense and the swings that you were talking about and all right. of this stuff that you see these low IQ baseball plays happening – is because guys like this aren't around the game every day as they should be. And each individual conversation is not the same. And what it is is that they try to teach you the same thing. But this person doesn't get it. And his his approach is different. And if you can't understand that person, my conversation with, let's say, Jock is different from Wade mm -hmm. because they're two, mm -hmm. different, uh, two different hitters, two different approaches, two different minds. One philosophy doesn't work. There's one technique that always ends up the same, but the conversation never ends up the same because the mm. minds don't think the same way and the approaches don't think the same way, but the technique is the same once we get there. And that's the difference between me and others. Your special advisor, the Giants, Barry, how often are you working uh – with these guys, sounds like you're there quite a bit. I just go down there, sit in the sit in the, in the batting cage, and then only speak when I need to. I don't do anything else. I sit down there, look at my phone, and that's it. They don't took everything else from. We used to have a little <laughs> there, so we don't have anything. So I, I feel comfortable down in the batting cage, and so I just sit down in the batting cage until somebody says hello and we talk, and that's about it. That's all I do. I don't do anything else. Unless I, I go up to the, the suites for, you know, the sponsors, they, you know, I go to do that or anything that they call me to do, I, I do. But I just like to just hang out in the bed cage. That's where I, my, my happy zone is. That's awesome. I got to ask you, Barry, and I know we will let you run in a minute. This has been absolutely fantastic. Toughest pitcher for you to hit. Who's the toughest guy you faced? The toughest one, it just depends what era, right? When I was yeah. most any tough pitcher for me would be a lefty, obviously because right. of the lefty left situation, right? So CC would be a tough pitcher for me. Randy Johnson, obviously a tough pitcher for me. You know, I can go Candelario a tough pitcher for me. Jesse Orozco was super tough for me. Even John Tudor was tough for me at the time when I was, 
coming up in Pittsburgh. Uh, Lavin was tough. Steve Avery, I thought was going to be the bomb bomb. I can go Meyer, Randy Meyer. I can go on and on and on to all the lefties that Billy Wagner. I mean, I can go on and on to all lefties. The best, I think, technician pitcher was Greg Maddox. Maddox was the best technician. Greg Maddox knew the philosophy of hitting at the same time I understood the philosophy of pitching. Mm. And Greg used it very well to his advantage. And I saw a lot of pitchers. Power pitchers are power pitchers. They're going to go to what they go to no matter what, and that's power. And eventually that's going to catch them because you don't have to do much. The power, they 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 generate the power so the ball goes for right? <laughs> and so it's those finesse technicians that you that really can break things, break you down if you're not smart. And I think Greg Maddox, younger was no, but as he matured, he was probably, to me, was one of the best technician type pitchers I've ever. Hmm. Gonna have to look up those Barry Bonds against Greg Maddox numbers <laughs> now. I did too. pretty well, but I did pretty yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a battle. It was a battle. It was a mind. It was. It was. It's tough. He was. You. You. If you weren't patient enough, he'll bury you. If you didn't have enough patience, he, he'll bury you, and he'll bury you fast. It will frustrate you enough to make you have a bad day. Because he can mm-hmm. execute everything, right? Like he can just execute any pitch. Yeah, he was very good at pinpointing accuracy, and he understood. He just understood a lot of things. See, I don't ever say too much, CC, because I, <laughs> I don't trust none of y'all on this TV. <laughs> I put it this way. He just knew more than I, I anticipated him to know. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still, hey, you're still with that business-like approach you had in the clubhouse. Love that. Yeah, because, you know, when the kids want to come to my school and want to learn something, then that's when they get it. Yeah, mm. I that's, love that. that's good. It, it, Barry, is there uh, last thing here? Is there a student right now in the game? Is there someone you work with, or is there someone who you watch hitting that you'd that you'd want to work with? Is there anyone in particular? Just want to ask that you're like, I love my conversations with this guy, with someone on the Giants, or I love watching this guy. He's someone I'd love to to get in a little deeper with from today's no, game. I like them all. I don't like just one particular thing. I I love the the act of hitting. So I love everyone's different ways that they go about it. And I pick it apart to fix it. I enjoy that aspect of it. I enjoy the challenge of hitting techniques. I, I, I enjoy anyone's Tatis swing compared to Wade's swing compared to this person's swing. And I'm like, I I can see his flaw. I can see his mistake. I can see where it can get better. And if we were having these conversations, he would see it too. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I would sit there and say, yeah, you're not connecting this to connect this. And this is where, why it's diminishing. We, I have, we have a language that we can understand, each other, which is the key to, to it. Because most of it is just talking. And yet he already knows the answer. A lot of times the professional athletes and hitters ask me a question. I'm like, okay, what school did you think I went to? That's just one of those <laughs> quick questions to see if I'm going to give you the right answer or I'm smarter than you. I mean, you know, I get those kind of <laughs> That's for that guy over there if you want to try to think I don't see what you're trying to do. And so once they put you put me through that test, they put me like, okay, Barry knows what he's talking about, right? And so that's the fun part to like. So I, I enjoy hitting. I enjoy – the philosophy behind it. I enjoy the technique behind it. I understand the distance of where the ball should go based on contact to speed. I understand the mathematics behind it and I understand the approaches to it. And mm. I, if I see a guy, for instance, I could see one player and I'm going to say, why does that bother you in a situation? And you'll be like, I don't know. Well, what forced you to swing at this when you're technically in a higher percentage rate than you were before. And so it's a, it's it, it's teaching at bats, it's teaching hitting, and it's teaching, you know, the mindset of the of the game that I learned of why I didn't miss a single pitch to hit a home run, or why I walked three times and got one pitch and hit a home run, because I understood this really well, and I understood what was going on, and I can mathematically calculate it. And that's analytics, but in a baseball way. <laughs> yeah, because in, in theory, you're going to have to go down there, smell it, touch it, hit it, right? Yeah. 
you know? And so I have to, eventually it's got to become, it becomes me, regardless of what this board says, regardless of what these numbers say, mm -hmm. you know, technically, like I sit there and say, you know, CC, he throws 72% fastballs here. He throws 20% fastball. Barry hits 10, 30, 40% baseballs here. So we'll put a player here. We'll put a player here. We'll try to block. The great hitters, you cannot, there's no way in hell. You can stick everybody you want on that right side and I'll still hit 40 home runs and I'll still hit 300. <laughs> no what you do, because physics tell you cannot move faster than I can hit that ball through you. It's not possible within a certain distance. Doesn't work. Yeah, it's not possible. So, I wasting your time over there with all of your crew, it's okay. You may you it's on, but some of them they're gonna be real close together because I'm still gonna squeeze it through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, Barry. This has been. Thank you for giving us all this time. Yeah, it is, yeah. It is awesome talking with you. Yeah. Um, and uh, I know uh, CC when he does his Mount Rushmore of athletes, he always has you you on it. Right there. Yeah, so this is. This is amazing for us to get to have this conversation. So thank you for taking this time. You guys are welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care, Barry. You guys see good to see you again, my friend. You too. <laughs>